All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, so I'm a college instructor. I've been teaching for 30 years. My wife is a middle school teacher. My uh, two uh, daughters, they go to uh, second grade elementary school. And uh, we had uh, the Parkland shooting. It seems like it was this huge landmark uh, event in terms of uh, our country having a discussion about uh, guns. And, and one of the discussion points is uh, arming teachers. And I will tell you, I've talked to the chief of police at my campus, and he's told me for the last three years, you know, uh, campus shooters are going up. It's just, it's, it's ever growing uh, problem. And uh, you know, I'm 56 years old. I'm thinking there is a, an isolation and an anger that a lot of uh, young men are experiencing, uh, and a hopelessness really about their lives that I don't think existed. Uh, if, you know, let's take 1974. You remember Watergate <laughs> when Nixon resigned? Um, it didn't matter what political tribe you belonged to. You know, everyone felt betrayed by that dude, man. He he uh, he really uh, tried to uh, take a wrecking ball to our democratic norms, and uh, there was this shared sense of betrayal. I was listening to Steve Almond uh, talk about this uh, on KCRW yesterday. Uh, for his book called Bad Stories, which I pre-ordered, about how we're in this new uh, this new era of tribalism, and I think this tribalism, uh, where we don't have common ground with our fellow Americans anymore, is part of the the violent uh, mentality that uh, has made it pretty alarming uh, for uh, for us as we uh, suffer all these uh, these types of uh, shootings. So. Here's the question, should we be arming teachers? Should I be armed? Well, uh, well you know, emotionally, part of me feels that uh, I would rather be armed if my um, students and I are in a classroom and we're cornered by a campus shooter. I mean, I don't want my students to be sitting ducks. I don't want to be a sitting duck. So part of me uh, wants to have some kind of fighting chance but you know when I when I sit down and I look at statistics and I look at research and I listen to uh, United States Marines and other military people talk about uh, what it means to be trained with arms, uh, I tend to think that arming teachers probably a bad idea, probably not even a plausible idea. I think we have about 3.6 or 3.7 million teachers. Uh, in this country, it would cost well over seven million to train them, according to what I read in the Washington Post. And so, uh, where's that money going to come from? You know, uh, schools are short of money. I mean, I know schools that don't have any textbooks for their kids. I got uh, former students who are now teachers in LA Unified School District who don't have any textbooks. The salaries are so low for a lot of teachers that some teachers are homeless. Uh, a lot of part-time uh, college instructors are um, on public assistance, so we don't even have money for basic stuff like having adequate salaries for a lot of these uh, teachers or textbooks. Where is this uh, 7.3 million or more uh, going to go for uh, gun training? That, that's my uh, first problem. The second problem um, is, is uh, that um, if you listen to Marines, a highly trained uh, shooter in the military in a crossfire situation is going to only be about 20% accurate. And so uh, there's, there's a high chance that uh, a highly trained gun person is going to uh, hit innocent people. Uh, how well trained are we going to be as teachers? Uh, that's another uh, problem I have with that. Uh, the third problem I have is um, temperament and physical ability. I mean, I know a lot of professors. I don't think they should be uh, packing heat. So check this out, man. In the early 90s, I was a lecturer at a university, and I had an office mate, and she was crazy. She um, she counted the the tile squares on the on the office floor because she wanted us to share exact office space. She thought that I might have a little bit more than half of the office space. She counted the tiles and she wouldn't allow me to ever walk or step over her barrier line that she had uh, somehow she had created in her head. She counted every little tile square in that uh, office. Do you want her packing heat? I don't think so, man. 
So, uh, and you know, some professors, they're nice, but they, I, don't, I think they're absent-minded. I can't imagine them packing heat. Had a, a colleague, he, he was so absent-minded, he, he would forget to cash his checks. In the back of his Volvo, in the back seat, he had a check that was like five years old. It was so old, the sun had yellowed the paper and the paper had curled. I can't imagine this guy getting trained with a gun. Also, the guy had a cane. Uh, I can't imagine him getting trained. You know, uh, in our faculty room at my college, there are some instructors who they've never been able to learn how to use the microwave oven. Do you want them uh, to be packing heat? You know, uh, we got some professors that can't drive. They're just too absent-minded. They they've lost their license. They're taking Uber to get to work. Do you want them packing heat? Uh, and some professors are violent. Have you ever heard of the Oxford comma? Should you use the Oxford comma? Should you not use the Oxford comma? Uh, some, some of these professors, they go to these conventions, these MLA conventions, to discuss these giant controversies, and fistfights break out. Do you want these uh, professors uh, packing heat on your campus? I'm not so sure. Here's another problem I have with packing heat. A mismatch. You know, what do you think the school is going to issue me if they want to arm me? Do you think they're going to give me an AR-15? No, they're not. They're going to give me probably a snub nose Smith & Wesson 38. They're not going to probably give me bullets because bullets would uh, lead to uh, potential uh, hurting my innocent students. They'd probably give me, uh, you know, snake rounds. And so here I got a, a Smith & Wesson snub nose 38 with snake rounds in it. And I'm up against a campus shooter with an AR-15, I'm dead. I mean, I lost that battle. So uh, that's a concern I have. And here's the other thing, here's the final thing I want to throw out at you. Um, I teach critical thinking, I teach debate. I try to encourage counter-argument, rebuttal. I like my students to disagree with me. I, because I really don't want my students to, um, to regurgitate my worldview. I'd rather them just think for themselves. And if I'm packing heat, if I'm walking around with a holster and a gun, I think that changes the dynamic. I, don't, I think it makes me less of an instructor and more of a cop. I already look like a cop. You put, put a, uh, an armed, you know, you put a holster around me, and I think uh, I'm in full cop mode now. And I think that changes the dynamic of the class. You know, militarizing the class, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, this is the new normal we want to do. It's scary, though. It's really scary. I mean, I don't want to be a sitting duck either, but uh, the uh, the reasons I give, you know, from an intellectual uh, point of view, uh, tend to make me inclined to not support arming teachers. That's not the way to go. But uh, we're in a new world now, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, so uh, pretty sobering note, man. And I'm teaching this very topic today in my uh, critical thinking class. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to get ready. And until next time, I'm out.